So it's finally here. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Reformation, which was launched by Martin Luther over 500 years ago. And today I'm going to be preaching on Martin Luther's favorite psalm, Psalm 46. It's the one that inspired him to write the hymn we just sang, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And in this psalm, the psalmist writes of the world as he knows it falling away, literally. He says, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. He goes on to talk about nations raging, kingdoms tottering, all of the worst disasters that any person can imagine are wrapped up in this psalm. And it's no wonder that Luther was drawn to it because during his career, the earth gave way, the mountains moved, and wars raged, and he was at the center of it. At the time, you see, the Roman Catholic Church was as permanent as the earth. And it towered over all of Europe's like the Alps. It was everywhere. They dictated everything that went on in everybody's life all the time. But even though the church was everywhere, it seemed like it was nearly impossible, especially for Luther, to find God. On a trip to Rome once in 1511, Luther stayed at several monasteries on the way. And he noticed that the monks of these monasteries lived luxuriously. They had low moral standards. They they lacked spirituality. They didn't live their lives in accord with what was revealed by God, how people, how Christians should be living their lives. It was it was very disillusioning for him. He couldn't believe that these people, these monks who are supposed to be spiritually higher, spiritually greater than everybody else, lived lower, seemed to live less spiritually than everybody else. It really bothered him. But he held out high hopes for Rome. Rome, the holy city, the seat of the pontiff, the pope. Surely in Rome, Christ would be present. Surely in Rome would be where, as our psalm says, there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. This would be Rome, the holy city, the city that would not be moved, that would stand against all evil, where Christ would be on full display, where God ruled, where Christians lived Christian lives. This Martin Luther couldn't wait to see. But when he got there, Again, he was disappointed. Again, he was disillusioned. One author sums up Luther's Luther's diary when he talks of Rome in this way. He uses an old Roman proverb. He says, if there is a hell, Rome is built on top of it. The more Luther saw of Rome, the more Luther saw of the monks, and the more Luther saw of the church of his day, the more he despised it. Where was God? Where was God? It's a question that was asked before the Reformation, it was asked during the Reformation, it's been asked since the Reformation. It's a question that probably Adam and Eve asked shortly after they were sent out of the garden. It was a question that Luther constantly asked himself. It's a question that you find in the Bible over and over again, especially in the Psalms. When you read the Psalms, where are you, God, pops up all the time, except usually it's phrased, how long, O Lord, will you hide your face from me? How long, O Lord, will you hide your face from your people? Lord, where are you? Where is God? In our psalm, the psalmist writes, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. I can't help but think that for a lot of people, a lot of us, sometimes that's just a hollow phrase. God is our refuge and our strength, a present help in our time of trouble. 
Early in his career, that wasn't Luther's experience. It was not his experience that God was there with him. For him, God was far off. God was vengeful. God was angry. He was mad. God was out for blood. God was not a God of salvation. He was a God of damnation. Luther used to spend hours and hours and hours in the confessional booth confessing his sins. He would confess every little thing. He would even confess sins that he might one day sometime in the future maybe possibly even think about committing because he was so afraid of the vengeful God. For him, God was far off. When you read Psalm 46, though, there's a confidence in the psalmist. He's confident that God is there with him. He knows that God is on his side through anything that the world could possibly throw at him. I can't help but wonder, when trouble assails me, will I be more like Luther? God is far off. Or am I more like the psalmist? God is present, a very present help in time of trouble. When the world comes after you, how do you respond? Where do you go to look for God? Is God far off? Is God close to you? It's easy to say God is our refuge and our strength when times are easy, when we're living comfortable lives. It's easy to say we will not fear though the earth gives way and the mountains be moved. As long as the earth is giving way and the mountains are moving somewhere else, as long as war isn't raging in my backyard, God is certainly my refuge and my strength. I've had a pretty comfortable life. I haven't experienced much in the way of tragedy, in the way of trouble. I haven't experienced very much in the way of being under attack. Many of you here, though, can't say that. For many of you, you have been, you've, you've suffered abuse, neglect, deep, deep grief and mourning. Maybe you struggle with anxiety or depression or a physical ailment, cancer, heart attack. Whatever it is, if, if you haven't experienced it yet, one day you will. And when it comes for you, Will you be like the psalmist? When your world is turned upside down, will you be saying, my God is my refuge and my strength? Or will you be saying more like Psalm 13? How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? Where is God? How is he a refuge and a strength? Where is he in my time of trouble? Where is he in my time of need. Luther and the Reformers found an answer to these questions, an answer that wasn't being taught in his day, but an answer that's been true for all of Christianity. Fast forward a few years from his trip to Rome. Luther has nailed the 95 Theses to the door. He's been excommunicated. The church is split between the Roman Catholics and the group that would come to be known as Lutherans and Protestants. The world had been turned upside down. The earth had moved. Mountains had crumbled and wars raged. Where was God? During that time, Luther rediscovered the gospel. He had answered the question, our psalm gives us an answer too. The psalm names a place where God can be found. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. The holy habitation of the Most High. The temple. The place where every Israelite knew God could be found. It's where he literally dwelt among his people in the city of Jerusalem. When the earth moved and mountains fell, the psalmist knew that God would not be moved, that he would help, as our psalm says, he would help when the morning dawns. 
that though the nations rage and kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The answer for us today is the same as it was for the psalmist then. The temple. Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will raise it up again in three days. He was speaking of the temple of his body. What Luther realized and is evident from the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, is that the, the psalm no longer names just a place. Now the psalm names a person. The place where the temple of God became flesh. The place where the temple of God came to earth and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ. The place where the river whose streams make glad the city of God are found in the living water of Christ. He said, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And just as the Israelites gathered around the temple to be in the presence of God, we also gather around the temple. The new city of God, which the psalm talks about, is right here. Look around you. The body of Christ, the church, this is where God can be found. We come together and find our Lord Christ in his word and his sacraments. In holy baptism, you were washed clean of your sins. And now the spirit of Christ dwells in you. That living water is poured over your head. And you are transformed into the image of Christ. Now Christ resides with you. In the Lord's Supper, well, it's usually right here, but in the Lord's Supper, we take the body and blood of Jesus into our mouths. Here, dear brothers and sisters, is where you come to hear the life-giving gospel. Jesus died and rose again for you so that one day you will share in his eternal glory. Your sins are forgiven. You have new life. Where is God? Look around you. The church today is where we can find God and his life-giving gospel, means of grace. Though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the sea, Christ has overcome it all. He conquered sin and death and the devil. He conquered the grave for you. And this is where God has promised to be found. His word, his sacraments, his church. The church that he has promised will prevail against all evil. His church that will prevail against all, uh, throughout all time. The church that will prevail against the gates of hell itself. God comes to you in his word and his sacraments. There is no force in heaven or on earth below that can defeat our Lord Christ. The psalm says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am with you. Be still and know that I fight for you. Be still and know that I win. Be still and know that you win. Christ has overcome the world, and because of that, so have you. The church will remain, as Luther says, and take they our life, goods, fame, child, and wife. Though these all be gone, our victory has been won. The kingdom, ours, remaineth. In the name of Jesus, amen.